Hey all you Saab freaks and welcome back to Treonic 7 and my new 2009 Saab 95 Griffin. Today we're doing the first mods to this car, beginning with my awesome phone holder. I took this phone holder from my 2002 Saab 95 Arrow that you know as Luxon. And I'll be showing you the full procedure for installing this Brodit Pro Clip in the Saab 95. To recap, the phone holder from Brodit consists of two parts. First the part that is custom made for the car, and then the part that's custom made for the phone. In my case a Galaxy S5. And this phone holder has a swivel joint, and also a charging point. And it places the phone here, it's quite high up, but still not in the way of the driver's view, and also not in the way of the vents. So the install video essentially consists of two parts. First we install the mechanical part here, and then we install the electrical part, which will be down here. With the phone holder you get this little plastic prying tool, and we pry the speaker off. Or essentially the speaker cover. Put it to the side. Underneath the cover you will see the center speaker, and you take a T25 Torx wrench, and you loosen the bolts. The clever part about this phone holder is that it's placed underneath the speaker. So these speaker screws help hold the phone holder fixed. And then you carefully lift the speaker and place it to the side on the dash. And put the screws in a safe location. Next we install the phone holder in the dash. This part here goes under the speaker, and this little hook part here goes between the upper dash and the dash panel. And here we need to be a bit careful, because in the 95 Griffin, with the vector package, this panel is of a high gloss black material. And you don't want to scratch this. Instead we want to lift the upper dash up as much as possible, using our plastic prying tool, and then carefully inserting the hook, and then the hook will uh, grip behind the black panel. Begin by measuring up the approximate location of the phone holder. Then very carefully insert the plastic prying tool between the panel and the dash. Use the plastic tool to widen the gap here and then push it and then on the other side and push it towards the dash. After fighting with it for a little bit, I was able to get it inside. I also had to push up this upper soft part with my hands, so that the gap would widen enough so that I can get the hooks in. I can now tighten down the speaker gun, which will hold down the upper part of the holder, which will make it extremely sturdy. But I will wait with this part until I get the electrics done. We will steal power from the 12 volt outlet, because that's controlled by ignition. We take out all the loose parts, and then again use the plastic prying tool to pry around to loosen all the clips. And after prying all around, I now pull it out. You will see some wiring connecting the outlet and the light around the outlet. For the time being, we just disconnect everything. And put it to the side. The 12 volt outlet looks like this, and behind there you have standard size pins. Here is the negative or ground, and here is the positive. We will steal power by using our own little cable that we built with normal cable shoes. I built this for Luxon, and I made it easy to remove and reinstall. And importantly, the circuit I built also contains a 2 amp very quick fuse. So down here at the connector, I insert the negative cable shoe and the positive cable shoe. Then I take the cable from the phone holder and put it down through the speaker hole, and then I want to fish it out from underneath. And this is easily done without having to remove the head unit. So the cable popped out down here. 
Depending on the model of your Brodit phone holder, you'll have different types of boxes. In the newer ones, like Anna, my wife has in her 2006 95 Vector, it's actually going to a USB converter. But this is an older model, so I insert the 6-pin outlet to the DC-DC converter. And we're now connected up to the car's 12-volt system. I will reinstall the panels and the outlet and put all the cables behind the dash. What remains now is simply to put the outlet pins back to the correct cable shoe. Ground to ground. And the auxiliary lamp to its own feed. So we'll carefully put the panel back together. Right, there we go. The electric install is invisible and also reversible, which means we can remove this in a matter of minutes, just like we installed it. The only remaining thing is to put the speaker back on, which will hold the back end of the holder down. Make sure that the speaker is actually holding the phone holder down. Then try to measure the approximate length of cable you need for the swivel to turn freely. And then use your T25 Torx wrench to put all the screws back together. And there we go. It's a very stable phone mount and the swivel allows me to turn the phone in any direction I want. Also, if there's any sun glare, I can just angle the phone up or down slightly to avoid getting blinded by the sun. When putting the speaker grill back on, you might have a little difficulty getting it all down because of the phone holder taking up some space. What you want to do is to take a file and carefully file down this part slightly. I will do the filing down later, but for now I'm very satisfied with my phone holder install. Phone holder is done and I can now control my music and my audiobooks and maps while driving. This is like a GPS navigator, but much better because Google Maps is always much more updated than any car-bound GPS system. It also charges the phone and the only cable you see is this one. The rest of the wiring is behind the dash. And as I said, you can also tilt it and turn it to your liking. The next part for today is installing my Mobius dash cam. We'll simply remove this upper panel and that's very easily done. You just pry open the lamp cover. Then you use your T20 Torx wrench to remove the screw and pull down the panel by hand. Depending on the equipment level of your car, remove either both the glass crushing sensor and the inner temperature sensor from the plastic panel and move the panel aside. You can pry down the electrical connector and then again use your T20 Torx wrench to remove the three Torx bolts holding the rearview mirror in place. You will need a quite a bit of torque to remove these bolts. You only need to loosen the three bolts, not remove them entirely. This will remove the mirror. And now all you have to do is to part this connector. And that's how you remove the mirror. Right, so at this point I found something strange. The plan was to take the electrical connector from Luxon, since I'd spliced down some electrical connectors for the dash cam there. Apparently Saab changed the connector in 2003. So in my 09 here, I have this male connector and so is the O2 mirror connector from Luxon. They took the same connector and reversed the genders. That was quite unexpected. So instead I had to go into my workbench and redo the electrical splicing because this is the female connector of the O9. And I spliced on that mini USB converter onto the electrical wiring. So the funny thing is that if I take a mirror from 2002 and I take a mirror from 2003 to 2010, I can actually put those two connectors together to the mirrors. That's quite an odd change. But anyhow, I solved the problem and now it's time to put the mirror back on with the dashcam power supply connected. And just like before, it's simply a matter of putting the screws back in. The 
the bolts were pretty tight on her factory, so you want to tighten them down quite well. The mirror is now screwed on, and we can now connect it electrically. And remember that the plug has its own little place here. You snap it in. Now that the mirror is mounted, I'm going to go ahead and mount the dash cam. And since it's a permanent install, I'm going to use one of these adhesive mounts to the windscreen. But first, I want to remove this Autobahn vignette. Now, I know I have many viewers from Switzerland, so why don't you come down to the comments and say hello? Myself, I'm actually born in Switzerland, and I've lived there for many years. So it's always a bit of nostalgia to see an Autobahn vignette on a Swedish car. For those of you who don't know, this is something you have to put on your windscreen to be able to drive on the Swiss Autobahn. And you pay around 40 Swiss francs for it, and it's valid for one year. But just as every Swiss motorist knows, it's a little bit of work every year to remove the old one and install the new one. I'm just going to make quick work of it by using a hot air gun and very carefully blow hot air on the sticker. Just use the lower setting. Such a sticky mess. Right, so the sticker is mostly gone, but now we have the glue remains left. I'll now use a bit of isopropyl alcohol on a microfiber cloth to remove all the remains. Right, that actually took longer than I'd hoped for. I'm also going to clean this part of the windscreen with alcohol to prepare for the dash cam install. As always, the cleaner the mounting surface, the better the adhesion. Okay, let's see where I want the camera. I want it to be behind the rear view mirror from the driver's perspective, but I also want it as far up as I can, so it isn't as conspicuous from the outside. Right. No going back, it has to stick correctly on the first try. There we go. Apply a bit of pressure to make sure it sticks. And connect it to the wiring. The blinking LEDs here and here tells us that the camera is working. And then when I turn the ignition off, I've set the camera to run for one more minute before turning off. So this install of the Mobis camera is completely automatic. It turns on with ignition and then turns off after a while after I turn off the car. If anything happens while driving, I have a high definition, high quality video of what happened. So the mirror is installed, the dash cam is installed and the wiring is installed. Now we want to put the cover back on. Put the screw back in. And the lamp cover. And voila, there you have it. Phone holder done and dash cam install done. I am very happy. My daily commute will now be much easier and safer. We have a lot more videos of my new 2009 Saab 95 Griffin coming up. So be sure to check out our channel and if you want to keep up with our latest videos, make sure to subscribe. You have been watching Trionic 7 and we are the YouTube channel for Saab enthusiasts. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next Saab video. Bye bye.